What's your biggest dove haul ever? The, a limit. A limit. Lucked out with a limit. Um, okay. Getting 15 doves. How you guys doing? My name is Corey Tucker and I'm here with Jaren Beck. He's an outdoor skills specialist with the Division of Wildlife and today we are dove hunting. Can you tell us where we're at? Yeah, we're at a public dove hunting area managed by the Ohio Division of Wildlife specifically for hunting doves. All right, so I think we're getting ready to walk, walk along this crop line here and then figure out a great spot to kind of settle in and look for some doves. Yep, this is the typical setup that are on public wildlife areas for dove hunting. All right, come on with us. So tell me about this habitat. I see crops over here, this open landing here, trees over there. Is this where doves hang out? Yeah, this is the typical dove habitat that you'd look for. So the bare ground serves as a, a landing zone and feeding area, so they love that. This corn over here, that's where we're gonna hide so they don't see us and kind of spook off. So doves have pretty good eyesight? They got good eyesight and they got a bird's eye view from above. So they're gonna see us if we're out in the middle, but depending on the time of the season, they're not always real weary of human activity. So the first week or two, they're not gonna care if we're out in the field walking around, but after a week or so, you wanna hide as much as you can. And you pointed out the, the trees around us, in the middle part of the day, they'll be loafing up in there. After they've got their bellies full, they're just kind of digesting, soaking up the sun's rays, or maybe getting some shade if it's a really hot day. So when, when are the doves active? They're pretty much active the first couple hours of the day, and then it varies throughout the day. Sometimes they'll loaf, other times they will go to water if it's really hot or they'll continue to feed if you say, say they got a cold front coming through. And what do doves look for, you know, for their meals? So their primary food source is seeds. So this field prior to it being mowed might've been millet or sunflower. And that's what's gonna attract the doves in here. The bare ground is really key. If you look like right in this area, makes it really easy for them to find them seeds sitting on top of the ground but this looks like a great area right here to get set up. Let's do it. So Jaren, I think we found our spot. Mm -hmm. So what's next? Next, we're gonna set up the decoys. So we got our seats situated and I picked this spot to set up the decoys because we have so much open space in front of us. It almost makes a flyway for the doves out in the distance to see our spread. Okay. So if you wanna take this, I'll grab the bag with the rest of the decoys. I like to set them up 15 yards or so in front of our hiding location. So right out here is a pretty good location. And do I turn this bad boy on? You can turn it on right now, yeah. So that's ready to go. Some people, some people overthink the angle that this is facing. I like to face it so it looks like the dove's landing from the direction we anticipate the dove's coming from. So in this case, it's that direction. All right, I'll, I'll take a couple of these. Give you those. Now you're gonna need some stakes for a couple of them. Uh, don't mind my dirty laundry I brought. Don't worry, it's clean. I just keep my stakes in here. I kinda wanna juggle these. Let's see it. I don't see any doves yet. We have some spare time. All right, here we go. All right. <laughs> All right, so here's some stakes. Those go with the ones that I'll have- I'll give you this one back. Yeah. That one probably goes on a branch or something. Yep. I'll give you that one back real quick. Okay. And where, where you typically set these at? I'll set those right around the landed decoy. So 
within eight, ten feet or so. Okay. So that'd be a good spot. One over there. And get him down like that? Well, the or higher him, they are. We'll get him like that. Yeah, keep them up. That way they pop a little bit more and they don't blend in. Okay. You, the doves probably aren't going to see it if you bury it, right? True. So keep it high. That way they can see it. So stake that one over there. I'll take a couple stakes from you too. So is that what this is for? This little hinge, say so you don't go deeper than that typically? Yeah, so you don't go too deep and yeah. These are designed, at least they they say that they'll spin with a little bit yeah, of wind. Yeah, that, that one started spinning a little bit. Usually once they're set, they don't spin. It'd have to be really gusty, and I wouldn't be hunting if it was that windy. But these work pretty good to make it look like a feeding dove. Now these other ones that I have in here, as you mentioned, they look like they're more for a branch. That can work, but typically, there's not branches in the okay. middle of fields where I'm hunting. So I'll give you that and show you my, my trick. This is really complicated how I do with these. That tail just sticks right in the ground. I like that. So that makes it easy. You don't have to keep track of the stakes for those. It's good placement there and here, catch. Go ahead and stick that one a little bit further out just to give our spread a little bit of depth. Perfect. So that's it. That's all we have to do for setup. Now we just need some doves and I guess we got to turn this on. So Jared, we found a pretty good spot here. We have the, the decoy set. We haven't littered. I think we're ready. Yeah, there's nothing more to do than just wait for the doves to show up. So. We'll sit down here and take cover. Again, we don't need to hide a whole lot, but that's the nice part about dove hunting. Until they show up, it's fun camaraderie. We can talk, we can move around. We don't have to hide a whole lot until we have doves flying in or hear them in the distance. So Jaren, when I went to fill out my uh, hunting license online digitally, it asked me to take this survey. It asked me if I was what, hip. Mm -hmm. what, is, what does that mean? You seem pretty hip to thank, me. Well, thank you. I like, you're pretty hip too. Well, thank you. Well, when it comes to filling that for your license, it stands for Harvest Information Program. It's a thing that you need to fill out every year to hunt migratory birds. So basically the information that you turn in for that hip survey is used by wildlife managers to regulate how many birds you can harvest, of what species, and things similar to that. Now, being migratory birds, uh, there are additional rules with our shotguns for capacities. Since we're hunting doves today, which is a migratory bird along with woodcock, waterfowl, geese, the shotgun can't be capable of holding more than three shells. So both of these guns, we've checked them, they have a plug in them, so we have one in the chamber and two in our magazine tube. What am I looking for? What type of dove or species am I looking for? And you know, how do I begin to find one and then create a shot around that dove? Morning doves are the only species or the most common species that we have in Ohio. Occasionally, we'll get a Eurasian collared dove that passes through, but they're mostly morning doves. You can identify them through the sound that they make as they're flying. It's almost like a, a, I don't know, a beeping sound for lack of a better term. And then also they have a gray colored body with fairly sharp pointed wings and that long tail. Now some of the younger doves won't necessarily have a long tail like an adult, but uh, that's what I look for in a dove. Some of the common misidentified species are killdeer. That's a really big one. Um, they look nearly identical, but they have a little bit different call as they're flying through the air, and they're whiter. They have a whiter belly on them. But they fly super fast, so it can be hard to tell. You only want to shoot if you know what you're shooting at. That's important. Yeah, but their speed can throw you off. Thinking that they're going slower than they are, and it'll make the best of shots, think that, uh, or it'll make the best of shots feel like the worst of shots. Speaking of shots, are there any regulations about where I should be sighting doves at? 
sighting doves at? As far as, you know, if I see one on that branch or if I see one on this utility pole. Uh, yeah, so you cannot shoot a dove if it's on a power line, utility pole, or building. But if it's in a tree or on the ground, there's no regulations that say you can't do that. It's just personal preference if you want to shoot them while they're sitting still. Some people won't. Other people do. It's perfectly legal. One thing to keep in mind if they're on the ground is safety. You don't necessarily know if somebody's over in that cover across from you. So always be sure of your target and beyond. Now, when you shoot, do you typically sit or stand? I'll typically stand up. So if we see a dove coming in, for example, it's more natural for me to stand up real quick. That way I can swing through that shot and hopefully make a more accurate shot. So when you're shooting at them, I don't know about you, but can you swing all right while you're sitting down there? Well, not in this particular seat. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty low, but if you stand up, I think you'll have a much better line of sight on them and you'll be able to make that shot. When you're shooting at doves, you gotta consider the speed, the angle that it's flying in, and the distance, which will dictate how much you wanna lead that dove. If they're out there a good ways, and you got a full choke in the end of your shotgun, you can make the shot. You just have to lead them maybe six, eight, maybe even 10 feet if they're going left to right or right to left at an extreme angle. So until then, we just kind of hang out and wait? Yep. Until we see them appear? Yep, we're just waiting. And sometimes if the action's slow, and we see doves sitting on power lines or we know they're in trees around us, we can make dove call sounds. That might work. <laughs> Let me I don't know it. what kind of sound that is. That's more like Chewbacca <laughs> or something. I don't know what. <laughs> Chewbacca, or I've heard pigeons make that sound. I got a barn in behind my house and I bet you'd call a pigeon in with that sound. You want to hear my yeah, let's dove hear call? I can't do it while I'm laughing, so it makes it tough to do it if I'm even smiling a little bit. but. Here we go. Not too bad. That's pretty cool. Yeah, they sell calls too. Um, Something like that, I think. It's, it's tough to get yeah. your cheeks just right and the pitch just right, but it's not dynamite to bring them in, kind of like turkey or duck hunting, but it works when the action gets slow. And they do sell the calls, but I don't know if it works enough for me to want to go out there and purchase that separate call. Back when I first started dove hunting, they sell those 99 cent kids recorders, or like flute in the toy aisle. I had figured out how to move my fingers on the six or eight holes on that and duplicate the sound of a dove. Pretty Look close. at you, you're a musician. Uh -huh. I'm gonna have you come to one of my gigs and just play that the whole time. I'll bring my recorder, I'll bring my <laughs> banjo, it'll be good fun. Banjo? Yeah. Well, I don't do that kind of music, but we might be able to work something in, we'll you know. We'll figure it out, yeah. yeah. So, Jaren, I think I see one. All right, get ready for the shot and take it. That was a good shot. Right. Thanks, man. Well, yeah. I, had a, I had a great teacher. Well, I'll take a little bit of credit, but you can't teach it everything. So one thing to note, when you drop a dove like that, those things blend in really good, even when they are right in front of you. So I know it was right around here somewhere. It was somewhere around here. I don't even like to blink when I drop a dove and have to walk up on it. Here it is. Ah! Go ahead and grab it. Now, is there, is there a certain way I grab this thing? Sometimes the feathers will pull out, so I like to grab them by their feet or by the head. So like these little feet here? Yep, little Got feet it. there. Got it, bam! We'll take it back to our hiding location and wait for some more to come in. How's that sound? All right. Jaren, I want to thank you for showing me the ropes today, but I don't think we're quite done yet. I see something on the ground here. Yeah, we picked up most of our shells, but I see one more down here. A good sportsman always picks up all their litter. A little litter is a big problem. Well, Jaren, 
Thank you for being with us today. For more information, please visit wildohio.gov.